Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Uh, stoked to be here with you guys and uh, just embrace this community that we got going on. Uh, yeah, like you said, we do the MMA for Money show. It's every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we basically, uh, it's about sports betting uh, on mixed martial arts. Uh, my brother was a UFC fighter, uh, fought in uh, the Ultimate Fighter Season 6, and so I know a lot about uh, the sport between the camps and inside information, stuff like that. So we, me and my host, uh, Bob, your favorite garbage man on Twitter, we do our best job uh, to give our, our fans the best look at a, a bet for the upcoming UFC uh, to give them a free bet so they could hopefully uh, cash some money. That's pretty cool. How did you get – so your brother obviously is, is deeply involved in MMA, but uh, how did you both get uh, introduced to the sport, which has just skyrocketed in popularity – and, uh, you know, in terms of pay-per-view, pretty much every category. When I was growing up in high school, it was an edgy thing. It was mm -hmm. something that, you know, my parents didn't want me to watch, right? When I was 16, I was glued to it. I mean, oh, and yeah. I, I still am a fan, you know. But uh, anyway, tell us a little bit about your backstory. Great to, great to have you here. Yeah, um, you know, I I don't like you know I like to do my own thing and not just uh, bring up my brother's accolades, but it's it's for this thing it's it's relevant. My brother, uh, he's sadly is a war machine. Uh, John Copenhaver, uh, he's now got a life sentence in jail forever for uh, being an idiot. Uh, so, but either way, but the point is, is that I've been uh, he was uh, trained in the lion's den in San Diego with Ken Shamrock uh, back in the, the two thousand I guess two thousands ish and. Uh, early 2000s so we, we got our start over there at the lion's den with ken shamrock a uh, super famous fighter as you all know uh, fought in ufc one three and five and uh, many others uh so you know with between the, the experience of ken shamrock my brother fighting um for me it was just kind of an easy entry to the sport to analyze it and to you know to bet i ended up i just kept I just kept winning, man. I every I just knew the sport so well. I knew who had a black belt, who had a brown belt, who had better boxing, who switched stances, uh, like I said, who's orthodox, who's southpaw, whatever it may be. Uh, I would find an edge, and I and I literally I, I proposed to my fiance with a five a five plus thousand dollar ring that was paid for by uh, winning MMA bets. Uh, thank you, Bovada. And uh, so it, it literally started from that about five years ago, um, and then about 2017 is when uh, I really started embracing it. Um, the, the betting community is big into cryptocurrency. Um, and so we got into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well about 2016, 2017. And thank God, man, um, it, I, I noticed it. I trend things. I used to be a paramedic on the ambulance. I uh, went to Daniel Friedman, UCLA. I saw a couple of UCLA uh, vets in here. So shout out to the Bruins. Um, so I was a paramedic. So I'm used to trending uh, pa uh, patients. Um, and so I, I just see little little changes here and there. While I was betting on Bovada, I noticed that uh, they, they offered to pay me out and not cash or courier by check like normal, but they offered me Bitcoin. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, who, what are they, like, why would a book you offer me something that doesn't, that's not valuable or tangible, you know? Like, it doesn't make sense. So I, I my, my curiosity peaked and I started reading into a blockchain. And thank God I did, man. I started hitting ICOs uh, in 2017. Um, you know, like Nexo, Waves, um, you know, many others. And so either way, so the betting community is a really strong in the cryptocurrency and uh, just a really strong uh, community in general, very much so like this HAPS is. And so I, I can't tell you how many friends I've made just off Twitter that was in the betting community. And then we ended up uh, doing investments together. I'm also one of the early Tesla shareholders. Uh, I got into about $99 before uh, the pre-split at $2,500. So I'm a pretty sharp cat, and uh, literally my boss, MMA for Money, uh, one of the best bettors in all the world, not just in mixed martial arts, but in all sports. Uh, one specifically, man, uh, NASCAR. This motherfucker, Fudger, sorry for cursing. He pulls out NASCAR wins like you would not freaking believe, man. And that's literally how I started looking into my, my boss, uh, Jay Terullo Prime. Uh, he's over there in New Jersey. He's big in the blockchain. Either way, I met him. He would just like, he'd call a race and be like, oh, they picked these three racers. And I'd be like, ah, uh, all right, I'll, I'll look. And I'd look back later that day. Sure as shit, dude, he'd win that race and won $1,400 off 100. Um, sometimes 2,000, sometimes fucking crazy numbers, dude. And I was just like, dude, this guy's crazy good, you know? And so uh, his name happened to be MMA for Money, Prime Time. And so he didn't have a um, mixed martial arts podcast. 
he wanted one, so he knew I had a connection. My my host is uh, your favorite garbage man, Bob. Super smooth, buttery voice. Uh, we got the radio jazz. Amazing handle. Like, I, I thought Oscar the Grouch was everyone's favorite garbage man, but... I mean, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, either way. No, he's a super funny dude. Uh, we Originally, we were going to call ourselves the nerd and the nut because I'm a psycho and he's so like just a nerdy, uh, just calm dude. I thought it'd be pretty funny because he would kind of hold me down. I was like, that guy's crazy. And then he would kind of keep me calm. So either way, but we ended up being you know, the MMA for Money show. So that's how we got started. Now we have a third co-host. His name is Mikey Gills. Super talented dude we brought in. He does DraftKings uh, for, MM or for MMA specifically and for free. The dude's amazing, man. He cashes some of our uh, our listeners some amazing uh, uh, bets on the weekends for DraftKings for free. Uh, nothing's asked for, and just besides listening and subscribing. So uh, now they've got the three of us. We call the three amigos, basically, and uh, so that's just what we do. Do you awesome. do you think of yourself as a like like a journalist who's covering um, mixed martial arts? Yeah, like to no, a traditional I, sports journalist, or it seems more I, like you're into sort of the the betting financial side. It's it's kind of a mixture of both, right? Um, if I would, if I could, I guess if I could, I can I can write a, like a poetry. I can write a poem really well, and I can come across pretty good. But I I'm not. There's other people who are better with grammar and English and writing things. I, I I could probably write a book. I could probably tell someone to write a, like what to write in a book, but I'd want them to like make it look better. So I'm not a journalist because I don't want to put it out there in the sense of putting professionalism on a, like an essay form, but uh, I'm a journalist in the sense of covering the sport as a journalist would with more insight because I have trained mixed martial arts myself. I've uh, done jujitsu my whole life, wrestled myself too, um, trained with some of the best in the world. Uh, so my insight's a little bit more in depth than a journalist because a journalist would not know what it's like to get choked unconscious. You'd but be surprised. I, I, I just... <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a, there, there's a few. There's a few, but you know what I mean. I mean, ho hopefully not many, but anyway. Well, I definitely would know uh, the football field in terms of uh, playing on that, but not getting uh, choked out now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, it's nothing to brag about. I'm just saying when it's recovering a specific sport, I mean, I didn't play uh, football to a high level. So, I mean, to hear me, you know, it'd be like a, I'd be just some idiot uh, fan on the couch telling, you know, these guys how to play the game that they love so much. I don't have enough uh, knowledge in that specific thing. But uh, so for me, be, knowing what it's like to lose consciousness, it, do, it just does help it in certain situations when the referee calls the fight early or the referee uh, doesn't call it in time. And then everyone, there's a controversy and then it ends up for being a good show. Totally understand, man. Totally understand. <laughs> I, also just, I, I, I think it's interesting sort of like how it changes when you are covering a sport for the purpose of like helping people bet on it and make money versus if you're just like covering it, you know, for people who are interested in watching. It. Yeah, well, because interested in watching it caught your feelings get involved, right? So you don't have feelings in betting. You know, that's the number yeah. one rule. You know, I'm a Dodger fan. You better believe when they lost to the Boston Red Sox, I bet every single game against the Dodgers. I'm a Dodger fan. I know good baseball. Boston Red Sox was too good, bro. I surprised that they, we won even the – one, the one game we won, the one, the one fucking game we won against the Red Sox, I, w I bet against them, and I was in shock. I was like, no fucking way they did not want that. It was the, like a 15-inning game. Either way, bro, it's just funny. Like I said, feelings aren't involved in that sense. So uh, in the sense of like, I don't have any feelings for that team. I'm just trying to find us the edge to win on betting and hopefully make my better some money, you know? The, the one advantage to betting against your own team is that you win either way, whatever whatever the outcome is. Dude, that's, you, you that's couldn't have- That's the one thing I like about it. You couldn't have said it any better, bro. It's, it's, like, it's, like, a, it's like, oh, we lost or we won. Either one, I won. That's fair. Yeah, I get it. But but I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me. I don't know for sure. Uh, stay with us. We have Ted Hicks here as well. That I just want to give it some huge props to for joining us tonight and thank him for being so patient. Uh, we are really excited to have you, Ted. Uh, yeah, first. I I think I've I've got to get going. Uh, so I'm gonna head off and then I'll sure. I'll keep watching and Ted, you you go ahead. Pete, All Tom, right. thank you so much for. Uh, you know, having me on, uh, David, great to meet you. I hope we can talk more about the media industry at some point. For sure. See ya. Take care. Take care. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah. Us. Yeah, great to have you, Peter. 
Hey, and while, we'll, while we're here, and I got uh, Pablo and uh, Peter, I appreciate both you guys for helping us get those sponsor badges and stuff for the show. Hey, got you it. earned it. We got those. We all earned it. Yeah. 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 You, well, we, you guys did the work. You, you guys did the work to make it possible, so I appreciate you. Um, hey, we're, we're really happy to have you here. And you're right. you're right. you're right. Is that coming from you, Peter? Or who is that? <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> I'm in, I'm, in Simi, I'm in Simi Valley. There ain't enough city around. <laughs> Though I'm in New York, and we, we're we usually hearing fire engines. On this occasion, it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> That's me. That would be Hollywood, California. Ah, Got you. House. Definitely, David. Oh, David, you're, I'm on Local 44 Hollywood. I, I work in the studios as a prop maker. So oh, no I'm, kidding. I'm, yeah, so uh, 44 right over there in Burbank. Oh, how much. cool. Yeah. Well, um, that you're where I'm located, and where you were hearing those fire engines was uh, Fountain and Crescent Heights. Just oh, the Sunset Strip. Fountain is one of the secret streets to get through Hollywood somewhat fast. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, that was Sam Kinison's legendary advice to drunk drivers: <laughs> said, take Fountain. That oh was, yeah, uh, yeah. That was, that was be, part of his act. Because I used to work in LA, man. I've never been there before. Oh, you got to oh. come out, come come out, bro. I'll barbecue the shit out of some food for you, dude. I'm trying to. I'm trying to come out there for the Super Bowl next year. Oh, you would love it, oh. would love it Mike. The but problem actually, is that uh, everybody moves uh, here and everybody comes here and they never go back. That's the uh, that's <laughs> well, the only downside because it never gets cold. <laughs> so party at David's. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, you can do a party at party at my house, bro. I got a nice. I got a nice house. Fuck it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Haps after party? Oh, and we have with us. It's out of real mic. Oh, the man, the myth. Randy the man, the man, the legend. The legend. <laughs> Let me just go briefly before the legend comes in here. Mike, uh, I just want to let you know, Mike, you're a hard act to follow. Um, I'm per se not a, you know, a, a journalist, more like a blogger. I spend a lot of time. Um, doing audio podcasting, working with a lot, a lot of people. Um, I write for Late Night Parents, which is, I, I would say you could define it as a dad blog. Nice. Because, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of mom blogs out there, but the dads get <laughs> things done too. True. Um, spend a lot of time as an influencer, attending sports, you know, sporting events, um, writing about technology, uh, writing about education, um, and how it all ties in together. Spent a few years on AM, FM radio. So this is kind of like the next part of the evolution, live streaming. Um, I will say this much to all the Periscopers out there. I have nothing but respect for you, but I was never a Periscoper. <laughs> so the great thing about this, I'm coming into HAPS pretty fresh. Um, and we do a show. We're going to do it Thursdays around 11 o'clock. I'm going to kind of stay true to that because it is called late night parents. So, and we talk about all different types of topics, some, some edgy. We try not to get too much into politics because it kind of drives the vibe down, but every once in a while you need to get in there and in, into the guts of, of politics. So with that, I will pass to the man, the myth, the legend, Randy W. Horton. Hey, thank, Randy. You, thank you for the compliment, Ted. <laughs> Randy, before you go, let me tell uh, everybody that Ted is officially 146 years old <laughs> when he was in high school. He played basketball with him. <laughs> Listen, the other night we were doing a podcast and I mentioned to Danny and to Mike about seeing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar play in 1979, uh, watching him on you know, regular TV, like with the rabbit ears before cable TV. Um, and those guys had a, a, a good laugh about it. My bad. I'm sorry. He's 185 now. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Randy, Randy, how you doing? Okay. All right. I'm doing all right. Ted, by the way, great to see you. Mike, good to see you. Mike, good to see you. <laughs> nice David, to see you. Hello, Pablo and Peter. Hello and good to see everyone. It's another beautiful morning in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia where all your dreams come true. My name is Randy Orton. I'm in Jubail, Saudi Arabia. And uh, just here to say hello and be a part of HAPS and enjoying HAPS and seeing people and meeting people around the world. What's amazing is to come on the screen and to watch this from the beginning. And it seems like I've met everyone. It's like, 
oh, wow, I know you folks. Mm -hmm. It's like we could be at the grocery and I could walk up and say, oh, my God, I know everybody at the grocery. This is fantastic. <laughs> That's yeah, it's just the community is developing so fast. It's it's unbelievable. Really and a big kudos to uh, Pablo and Peter. I mean, you guys are pumping that community up and out and keeping everybody together. It's a miracle, and it's really working out well. And it's really great to see a few people here from Tennessee. Chris, Tennessee. Mike, Tennessee. I mean, we, I'm amazed on how many Tennessee folks are getting online. So, Actually, as you guys know, I am originally from Tennessee, so... Big kudos on the Tennessee folks. 